Yeah, hello. Excited to be here today. This is a great event. I'm really excited that you all are putting it on. It's always so fun each year. So I wanted to just talk to you all super fast. We'll go fast about um, some of the gaming UX trends in 2017 and what we can sort of take away from those and learn about UX in general. So uh, 2017 was a pretty insane year for video games. I'm not sure if anyone knows this, but 2017 is now fabled as the best year for video games in history. It was a really weird year <laughs> for pretty much everything else, but in video games, um, it was phenomenal. People couldn't believe how many good games came out last year, and it kind of blew a lot of people away. So a couple of important things, the sort of highlights from video games last year. A game came out called Breath of the Wild. Did anyone play Breath of the Wild? Woo! It was awesome, right? So Breath of the Wild came out and was one of the best reviewed video games of all time. Pretty much every single list had it as the game of the year. And most of those lists said, not only is this game of the year, this I think is actually the best video game I've ever played in my entire life. And I'm kind of shook to my core about what I experienced here. And that included me. I had that experience. How many people who played the game also had that experience? Show of hands. Yeah, it was like, oh my god, I'm experiencing something here that is unlike anything I've ever experienced and that's exceptional. Um, other cool things happened. The Nintendo Switch came out, right? The Nintendo Switch sold 1.3 million units in one week. That makes it the fastest selling electronic consumer good in history. Also exceptional and pretty out there. And then a game came out called Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which broke the internet. It hit 3 million concurrent players at once, which is more than double the previously set record for a video game. And um, what was pretty cool was that every single one of these notable gaming accomplishments from this year, they were notable because they completely broke how user experience has been done in every single one of these areas up until now. They represented fundamental changes in game design and in user experience, and that's what made them successful. So I thought that that was kind of interesting and we could break that out a little bit. So first of all, Breath of the Wild, right? <laughs> Breath of the Wild, it um, broke something that a lot of people loved very dearly. It was an immense risk. So who's played a Zelda game before, in general? A lot of people probably played when they were little. Tons of people. So Zelda has a very tried and true format, right? You go into a temple, you beat the boss, you get a tool. You go to the next temple, you beat the boss, you get a tool, you go to the next temple, right? This is something that a lot of people love very dearly. I played Ocarina of Time every single day I was sick as a kid. This experience means so much to me and Zelda means so much to me. And Breath of the Wild said, you know what, no, we're gonna do it completely different. That is an immense risk. This is one of the most loved video game franchises of all time. And they said, no, I'm sorry. We want to do this completely different than we've done it before. And we're going to change everything. We know you all love it, but trust us. Which is so scary and so brave. But what came out of it was something pretty exceptional. So I'm going to play you just a minute here of the first couple of minutes that you experience when you're playing Breath of the Wild. You can see some of the subtle UX that's going on already, right? It's giving you just the information that you need. It's nice and clean. That stamina wheel is very smart. You know what that does instantly without any communication. And then this happens. And this is just what you naturally do as a player, and it's exactly what they intended. <laughs> you just walk out onto this cliff, and suddenly you were in this world. And watching this honestly still makes me pretty emotional, just because, like, when I did that in a video game, when I walked out of a cave and just walked to the edge of a cliff, and the game knew exactly what I meant to do and just panned around and showed me this world, it was very, very moving, and what this game is all about is that open world. So what they're doing is instead of saying, go to dungeon A, go to dungeon B, go to dungeon C, they say, here's a gigantic universe, do whatever you want, which was insane. It's the most truly open world game that people have done in a while. I'm gonna see if I can actually mute this video, because I bet it's got really annoying voiceover commentary, as anyone who's ever watched a YouTube video about games knows. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. 
So we're just going to fast forward this a little bit. So one of the things that made Breath of the Wild so interesting was that it actually used real physics in a way that no other video game has. That's like running around with a metal sword on his back, and if you run around with a metal sword on your back in a thunderstorm, you get hit by lightning and you die. <laughs> That's wild, right? Like the first time that happened to me, I was like, oh my, oh my God, this is so cool. I can't believe I just died like that. You can tame horses in the game. You can walk up to a horse and tame it, but you have to earn its trust over time. It's very, very cool. And each horse is completely unique. So you have to learn what they like, which is just so cool. I think that the next bit talks about using fire. So like you can set a fire and it will create an updraft and then you can actually use that updraft to fly. So it uses real physics in a way that video games have never really done before. A cool thing that happened was a guy who was reviewing this game very early on, he was playing in front of his mom and she was, he was like, I gotta get that treasure chest. And she was like, well, why don't you just cut down a tree and then walk over the tree to the treasure chest? He's like, mom, that's not how games work. I need to find the secret door that leads me to the key, that leads me to the treasure chest. And then she was like, well, why don't you try it? And he just did it, just worked. <laughs> Like, the game totally trusts you to just do things completely your own way, and it kind of breaks the way video games work in a way that puts an immense amount of trust in the user and is very cool. So, let me click back here. Um, so, the actual physics, it broke the entire story down into chunks, which was really amazing and impressive. So normally you get a cutscene and it welcomes you to the game and it's like, okay, great. What they did instead is they had you find memories of the story all over the world, see? You can just come across them randomly. And so you discover the story in your own way. You could find any scene in any order at any point. You could find this scene first, or you could find a scene very much towards the end of the story as a forgotten memory and it will totally affect the way you experience the narrative, and it puts a ton of trust in the user. So where instead of having a 10-minute cutscene that says, this is the world, this is your story, they had two-minute story clips that you found at your own pace, and then you put the story together yourself in a way that's very trusting and also very empowering. And it had a, um, it had a, really, a really immense impact because of that. So this game had a lot of very intense, powerful, memorable moments for me. First thing, when I climbed a mountain for the first time, it blew my mind, because <laughs> video games don't let you do that. I don't know if anyone's ever played Skyrim, but you have this Skyrim experience where you're like, I can make it up that mountain, and you start jogging, and then your character's just like, stuck <laughs> against the mountain like this, and you're like, oh no, I can't go up the mountain. So I started doing this in this game, and I go up there, and I start going like this, and I'm like, oh, too bad, and then Link just starts climbing like this. And I'm like, oh my god, he can just climb the mountain. Like, he can do anything. It's amazing. And that I'd never had that kind of power in a video game in my entire life. So that was one of my most memorable video game moments. Using lightning, right? I had to get this boss, and they were too strong for me. And so I said, wait a second, it's raining. I'm going to throw my metal sword at the ground. And then they walked on it, and then lightning hit them and killed the boss for me. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that shouldn't be allowed. But it totally was. And then like I had a horse, and there's no instructions for any of this, it's all self-discovery, which speaks to the power of the user experience design. I had an apple, and I said, okay, I can hold food because I can cook, which is the best part of the entire video game. And then I said, okay, what if I hold my apple, and I walk up to my horse like this, and I did, and my horse ate the apple. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, yes! I love you, let me feed you things forever. It made me so happy. And my biggest takeaway from this game was I didn't want to win. I still have not beat this video game. Because I got to a point where I realized I was going to win, and then I thought that if I won, it would change everything. <laughs> I wouldn't feel excited to play anymore because I will have won. So I stopped. And it's very weird because at this point in our history, two different types of user game design are conflicting against each other. This open world and this beat the game. And I could feel them inside my head fighting. And so I still haven't beaten the game. I don't know if I ever will, because I don't want that sense of joy and discovery to go away. So uh, everyone has unique stories of this. If you talk to literally anyone who has played this game, they will tell you a completely different story about having moments like this that I did, and it's pretty special. Another cool thing, so Nintendo Switch came out this year, right? And it just pretty much completely redefined how video games work in general. Is everyone familiar with the Nintendo Switch? Some folks? I'll have some pictures in a minute. So. Pretty much anyone who plays video games these days, their first thing will be, okay, this is a great video game. Can I play it on my Nintendo Switch? 
because that's how much they change things. So Nintendo Switch came after another product that Nintendo put out called the Wii U, which was phenomenally unsuccessful. It was terrible. It did so bad that people were really worried if Nintendo would be able to survive. And it outperformed the lifetime sales of that product. The, well, all the sales that that product did in one year, sorry, excuse me, Switch did the sales in one year that that product has done in its entire life cycle, which was like, 10 years. So it's, ama it's amazing. So here's an example, okay? That's the Wii U right there. That's the Switch. They don't actually look that different, do they? This is their least successful product of all time, almost destroyed the company. That's their most successful groundbreaking accomplishment that no one can stop talking about. And I find this really interesting because they're so similar and the difference is just a couple of key user stories you can take the controls off the side of the switch. It has slightly better battery life. That's pretty much it. And those few user stories made this difference. The difference is that I can take my switch up to bed every night and I can play two hours of video games. And I couldn't do that with the Wii U. And just that has made this difference which is exceptional. I can take the Joy-Cons off so I can set it on the table and I can play sitting down if I want. I can take the Joy-Cons off and I can put it on my bedside table and I can cozy all the way into the blankets like a burrito and I can still play video games. And just these small tweaks made a huge difference. Also, you know, you can be like her and you can take it to the party. <laughs> Everyone, I got my Switch. Let's go. <laughs> And then they've started to expand it with things like peripherals, right? They've started to build a Nintendo Labo where you can build your own cardboard systems that fit around it to make custom things, which is super cool. Um, but it really just goes to show that, you know, you need to iterate, right? If they had just thrown away all their ideas and been like, the Wii U was terrible, this was a horrible idea, let's never do anything like this again, they would have never had this success. Instead, they said, okay, we did this, we learned something, let's make just a couple of tweaks in that user story and it's their most successful product ever. So Player Unknown Battlegrounds is a game that came out this year and just pretty much broke completely how game shooters work. It had three million players. That's more than double what any other game has previously had. When I say three million, I mean three million people playing right now at the same time on a computer, which is just unheard of. So I'm gonna play a little clip while I just sort of explain quickly how it works. Who's played uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds? Yep. So, when I first saw this game, also gonna mute, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so when I first played this game, it didn't look like a game I wanna play. It's guys with guns, shooting each other, okay, I get it, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've seen this game before, I don't care, it's not for me. I have never had as much fun playing a video game as I have playing this video game. It kind of blows your mind. So the way that it works is instead of, so the way normal shooters work is you have a team of 10 people, team A. You have a team of other people, team B. Whoever shoots more people on your team, they win, right? If I got the most kills on my team, I'm number one. This video game drops 100 people into a piece of Siberian landscape. Last person standing wins the game. It's that simple. But no video game has ever done anything like this before. You have nothing, you have no level, you have no stats, you have no tools. If you find a pan on the ground, that's what you have to survive. If you find a gun, even better. And then you just try and live as long as you can. And um, I once stood in a bathroom in this game for 20 minutes facing the wall and had the best time of my life. <laughs> because the tension is extreme. You have no idea how it feels. You're like, okay, the circle is getting smaller. There's a circle that controls where players can play and it keeps shrinking. So this forces people to get closer and closer together. And that means conflict increases as the game proceeds. So like, look at how boring this is, right? This guy is just crawling around in a field. He's about to win the game <laughs> and he's gonna feel so awesome when he does that. So it's a game that took a whole bunch of really basic building blocks that shooting video games have always been made of, put them together in a new order, and made one of the most successful groundbreaking video games of all time. A video game that if I looked at it like this, I would never ever want to play, but when I actually got hands on with it, the amount of tension and intensity and excitement that I felt was unlike any experience that I've ever had in a game, which was pretty cool. 
Um, yeah, and shooters will never be the same ever, ever again. They created a genre from this. I was just at E3, pretty much every single company that got up on the stage, all these major companies, we're doing a battle royale. We're doing a battle royale. Because now this is what they all have to do, because one person changed the rules just a little bit. So those are some takeaways. I just wanted to show you guys some cool user experience stuff that I thought was neat from games this year for some inspiration. Diegetic user interfaces, do this, it's awesome. So this is when an action you take in the UI has a tangible real world impact that gives you a sense of what it's actually gonna do for your play. In this example, you can look through Link's UI and you can see that he has all this food. When you tell him to hold the food, the little representation of Link over there starts holding the food. And it's such a simple thing, but it goes so far in a user experience design. Suddenly, if you start burdening him with too many, he's like, oh crap, I can't hold them all. And you're like, oh okay, I can only give him five. It's just an instant communication that's made so clear by having that little representation of him right there. They didn't have to do that. They could have just said, equip, equip, equip. But because he's standing there and holding them, it just feels better, it feels so good. So I would encourage you to try and do this type of stuff in your designs. This is a game called Florence. Has anyone played Florence? Nobody. Okay, this is great. You should check out Florence. It's on mobile. Florence is a game about having a relationship. And it did some very cool stuff with its user experience design that was about communicating really unique metaphors in really simple ways using gameplay. So it's a game about having a relationship with someone and it used these simple, I don't need to play Fortnite. I do want to play Fortnite on my Switch, but I'm just going to. They've got me pegged, I'm just gonna close that. <laughs> so <laughs> they use little interactions like this, this is all real life gameplay, to communicate a relationship with using barely any written language. So for example, if we fast forward to this, this is having a conversation on your first date. It's represented by these puzzle pieces that you're trying to form a response with. <laughs> because you're trying to figure out how you want to talk to this person, right? Like, it's all new, it's all pretty fresh, it's a little bit scary, but you're trying to work it out and feel it out. And then if we fast forward a little bit, you'll see, later in the date, things are a little bit easier. I'm used to them now. Okay, I can do this fast. And it's kind of funny, right? Because it's a game that's getting easier as it gets longer, but it's representing this complicated emotion in a really simple, nice way. And then you can see how even later, at the party at the end of the night, things are feeling so easy, right? I really like this person. This is just so simple. This is so smooth. And things get closer, right? The pieces are now just right next to each other. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen? Yay. <laughs> but they can use this metaphor later on, so it walks through the whole process of having a relationship. And you can see how later on in the game, you're fighting, and you're trying to form your response faster than they are. <laughs> so this is a really cool example, right, of how you can take simple user interactions and you can convey extremely complicated emotional human subjects in a very smart way. Highly recommend this game. It's short, it's very, very nice. It's a very good game experience, especially if you don't play a lot of games. Yeah, it's, it's great, you should definitely play. So another thing, we were using handmade materials in games this year. This is a game that came out called Cuphead. And Cuphead, uh, a lot of video games, right? High-end, cutting graphics with super intense 3D modeling. Every single frame in Cuphead was drawn and rendered by hand, in ink, on paper, just like the traditional Disney movie creation process. How cool is that, right? Like, we're in this day and age where technology is so advanced, and yet these people decided to go back to the drawing board, and through doing so, created a truly unique and powerful art and aesthetic for their game that made it sell very well. This is one of my favorites, okay? Brash UI design. Can you imagine putting a UI design like this in front of a client? <laughs> It's completely out there, right? Like, it is so much to digest, but it made Persona 5, right? People would die for this user interface. People love it. And so I think it's a very cool example of how I would never design something like this. I would be terrified. <laughs> it is in your face. It is complicated. It is loud. 
But by doing this, they did something that no one else had ever done before, and it made a totally unique feel for their game that made it stand out and has made it one of the most endeared UIs of games of all time. Um, another cool thing, Simple Interactions, Deep Story. Has anyone played Reigns? Reigns is fantastic. All the interaction for Reigns is Tinder-style flicks and clicks. And you rule an entire empire using that system. It is very simple, but it has immense depth. It's one of the harder games I've played. To figure out how to get in and make all the choices that lead to the secrets that you can uncover and this glitchiness that will happen, it'll start breaking your device, and you'll be like, what did I do wrong? And you're like, no, no, you found a secret. It shows how you can use really simple tools and really simple interactions to create something with enormous depth that's very easy to get into but very hard to master. So that's all. A couple of takeaways from this year in gaming, user interface design and user experience design. Throw away your darlings, <laughs> right? Like Zelda. We have something everybody loves. They love it so much. It's OK. Just chuck it. Try and come up with something better. Try it. See what happens. Love broken things, right? The Wii U did terribly. But if they hadn't loved it and tried to make it better and learned from their iteration, then they would have never found the Switch. And then finally, heart first always, right? Games like Florence, they put heart first and they succeed. But games like PUBG did the same thing, right? The emotion that I feel when I walk out onto that cliff as Link and see that vista is powerful. And so is the emotion when I stand next to a toilet terrified in PUBG for 10 minutes, right? And that's because each of those designers, even though they're completely different games, they put their heart first, they put the emotion that they want you to feel first, and they designed from that point forward. So I would encourage you all to do the same. So yeah, um, thank you, here's my information. And also, a lot of times I give talks and people say, I don't play games, but now I wanna try. Here's my recommended list. These are all great for anyone who has never played games before, and they are all available on mobile. So check them out, high recommends. And thank you all so much.